Hey guys, I just wanted to get on here and do a little bit of a video on the tractors we took the Classic Green Reunion 2021. Um, here's kind of a side view shot of all of them. Um, we'll come all the way down here and start with the first one in the lineup. The one with the gray primer and everything all over it. This is the uh, one piece at a time, 3010 utility. We got this tractor out of a salvage yard and uh, after we discovered that there was a patch behind the starter where number four connecting rod decided to make an exit and that the rear transmission case was busted from sitting full of water and freezing. And later on we found out that uh, this tractor originally started life as a gas tractor and then at some point from the bell housing forward was switched over to 66 to 68 or later 3020 diesel uh, as you see it's got the square intake manifold and behind here don't mind the bungee cord that's a dry element air filter like what they started with in uh, 66 so <clears throat> after Realizing and noticing all of that, we just decided we'd have some fun with it. Um, of course, the first little white elephant in the room, I guess you could say, is the fact that the uh, exhaust is a straight pipe and it's a lot further back than it should be on a 3010, and that's because it has an M&W turbo kit. Um, again, just one of those pieces we happened to acquire and decided that since this tractor was, you know, so quote-unquote wrong anyway, we'd have a little fun with it. Uh, the clamshell fenders are not correct. Uh, those actually came off of a 420. And the lights have the cast iron brackets and the masts or poles or whatever you want to call them for a uh, standard or a row crop tractor that did not come with fenders. Um, again, just one of those things. Buddy of ours had it. Thought it would, you know, look pretty good on this tractor, and it, it does. And, you know, like I said, it's just kind of the one piece at a time, little Rat Rod 3010 utility. Next one in the line, uh, anyone who's been following me for any amount of time knows this tractor. Uh, this is the one that we overhauled a year ago, or finished the overhaul on a year ago, I should say. Um, and I need to catch up on some videos because... Uh, I've got video of the first start of this thing with its M&W Turbo on it, and I don't have it posted yet, so I need to get on the ball with that. I uh, still don't have the 4020 decals on it yet. Um, this tractor was actually part of the 4020 walk around at the Classic Green Reunion. Um, what they did with it is they started with the 4010 and then uh, just showed differences and changes of 40 from the 4010 all the way through the 72 4020s and uh, this was the one they chose it was the first power shift in the walk in the walk around lineup and it was the uh, first 65 diesel in their walk around um, it just kind of point out some changes for 65 since this was part of our talk um, 65 went to the biggest change for the diesels was they went to the smaller pencil style injectors um, over the bigger Bosch injectors that the 4010 and the 64 model, the first year 4020 used. The 64 4020 is kind of a tractor in itself, in and of itself, because I mean it, it's really there's there's none others like it. Um, it carried over a couple parts from the 4010 for that year and it you know had a lot of its own another distinct difference on a 64 any 64 power shift you see if it's a 3020 or a 4020 this is your engine disconnect clutch lever and it's going to be quite a bit longer on a 64 65 they shortened it um, that's just the the main differences um, of course uh, just kind of going over more of the talk that we did on it we've got the loader brackets for the 148 
all the paint scarred off the axle from where we had to drag it around so much picking corn with it last year uh, brand new tires those went on just the day before the show they're Galaxy Earth Pro 18 434s um, we've actually had pretty good luck out of Galaxy tires for as cheap as they are so we keep running them something else we pointed out during the walk around um, this tractor has the what most people call the Mannheim wheels on it uh, if you notice the way that the rim attaches to the wheel here it's different than what they were doing at the time which was a cast iron uh, clamp wedge getting around here so you can see on this tractor uh, that was a carryover from way back in the two-cylinder era worked worked good um, but this tractor had these Mannheim wheels on it when we got it we've never seen any need to change it so we haven't now if you notice yeah there's a good good comparison the yellow on the wheels of this 4020 and the yellow on the wheels of that 3010 two completely different shades that's because we decided to try the diamond hard water based paint that they sell at Rural King and when, um, when we first put it on it looked really good it looked really good three months later it was faded out to this real pale looking yellow so that's probably the first last and only time we use that paint okay moving right along another tractor that uh, has gotten a good little bit of air time on my channel the 4020 LP we call Hank um, really don't have oh lord where, where do I start with Hank so we've had this tractor for just over a year now um, have really enjoyed it um, just kind of give some I don't know if you want to call it distinctive things about this tractor or, or what, but it's got the taller LP tank. Um, 4010s and some 4020s used a shorter one. Um, you know, this one is the taller one, uh, and thank God it is. Not that it drinks fuel like it's going out of style, but uh, you know that you're feeding 362 cubic inches. Um, of course, being a late model, it is a side console, dual remote tractor. Um, and it is a 69. 69's still had the straight uh, shifter for the synchro range. And of course, the 4020 over there being power shift, its shifter is completely different anyway. Since we're on the topic of shifters, we'll just uh, do the 3010 utility here, and I'll show the show the shape of it here. Now that, and I could do a video just alone on the synchro range shifters, but that is the correct shifter for a utility. And you can tell that by how steep of an angle it comes up and how steep of an angle it comes out. Okay. Now, let's go back over here to Hank. And it being a 69, and I can't get a good view of it right there. 69 and 70, they had the more straight shifter like the 4010 and everything before it used or shoot the 4010 and everything up to 69 use that's what i meant to say um just kind of pointing that out 69 started the motorola alternators um unique thing about the late model lps is uh this rubber piece right here and where the LP valve handles come out um, that piece is going to be like finding hen's teeth so if you get a late model LP and it does not have that I feel sorry for you <laughs> okay um, really not a lot more I can say about Hank uh, other than just scroll through some of my other videos and you'll see some action shots of it at work um, oh one more thing about it that we discovered at the show is this roll bar, the, the roll bar on this tractor was probably a later addition because it's not filled with sand. I uh, found out at the Classic Green reunion that most of the roll bars on these tractors were filled with sand from the factory to help with noise. 
and that kind of is a segue into the gas 4000 here with its roll bar its roll bar is full of sand and i forget that roll bar is there when i run this tractor you can't on hank but anyhow um this is the gas 4000 that we've had for mm, i think we got this tractor in 2017 or 2018 uh, it's one of 256 4,000 gas synchros built. Hank over there is one of 691 LP synchros built, 69 and after. Um, I forget what the total production for 4020 LP synchros is, but for the late models, it's 691. So if you go by percentages and total number of tractors produced, Hank is more uncommon than this 4,000, but there were a lot less of this 4000 built like with the gas synchro range um, got the front rock shaft on it that we've had on for a few years all the cultivator bracketry um, here within the next week or so it's probably going to be wearing those cultivators again um, this tractor has the zenith carburetor on it instead of the marvel shebler uh, the marvel shebler was aluminum and a lot blockier looking and the best way to rebuild a Marvel Shebler carburetor is to take it off and throw it in the scrap, pan, scrap bin. Um, okay, so since we've talked a little bit about shifters and the differences, you see how the one on this tractor is crooked. And it's supposed to be. Uh, 71 came with the uh, crooked shifter. Now something that is not correct on this tractor is uh, this extra hand rest right here or rub rail whatever you want to call it this is kind of a power shift specific thing and if we go back over to buck here and yes that's this tractor's nickname this 65 40 20 power shift you'll see that it does have the rub rail and uh, that was added on the power shift and I'll do a little demonstration on it sometime, if I think about it. Um, when you're shifting up, you just kind of grab that rub rail and uh, you just kind of bump the shift lever up with your hand and then when you want to downshift, you just kind of bump it back, hook your finger around it and bump it back. And uh, that way when the tractor lurches, when it shifts, um, you know, you're not jerking it in and out and, in and out of gear and stuff but anyhow 71 and that's what year this 4000 is uh, was the first year for the crooked shifter uh, and we do have the updated 40 series style seat on it um, just because this tractor gets used and that's a really comfortable seat and the one that was on it was about junk uh, this one is a dual remote tractor not really gonna say that's a common or rare option on a 4000 but the whole idea of the 4000 was to be, you know, kind of more basic, a basic version of the 4020. And that's a whole nother video in and of itself. Um, I plan on parking this tractor and Hank side by side since they're both spark ignition tractors. Um, it'll be more of an apples to apples comparison. This tractor has got the Delco alternator on it. I believe. Well, I don't know. This one may not have been updated. Um, I'll have to do some research into that, but this has always had the Delco on it, and we've never had any reason to change it or question it, so we haven't. Um, another thing, if you were at the show and got to see it, uh, this poor old 4000 had buckets sitting under it from Thursday onward. Uh, about three weeks or so ago, uh, we took the tank out of it, and of course, last fall it started seeping. So we took the tank out of it just about three weeks or so ago, uh, patched it up, and everything looked good. Dad went and mowed 50 or 60 acres of hay with it, and everything's doing great. We took it up to the show, uh, took it up there Wednesday night. It sat there Wednesday night, all day Thursday. When we got there Friday morning, there was a dark spot between the front tires where it had been leaking gas so it spent the rest of its time uh, with buckets under it now it kind of ended up if, if I'd have known 
the way they were planning on doing it i would have brought some tools and uh you know some shop rags and a trouble light and a creeper and some stuff because where this tractor sat at the show um would be kind of like behind me where i'm standing right now um steve planbeck and taylor hagen had uh had their 72 40 20s there and they had some uh, they had it up against a, a beadboard wall and um had some memorabilia and tried to set it up kind of like a, a dealership would have been in the early 70s and if i'd have known that we could have set it up where they had the showroom there where they were sitting and then here where this tractor was sitting with the buckets and tools and all that crap underneath of it could have been the shop area but anyway uh, that's how it goes sometimes and then the last tractor in this lineup is the gas 4030 um it's hard to get an accurate number on how many gas 4030s were built there's some controversy over it um i'm not really going to get into it but it's it's well less than 300 uh, it's more in the 225 to 250 range and they were 73 only uh, this tractor does not have the convertible front end. Uh, several of the gassers that we've heard about had the convertible front. This one does not. Um, this one has the perma clutch. Um, I know that a dry clutch was an option, but I honestly don't know that ever any tractors ever made it out with a dry clutch. Um, it does not have tilt telescoping wheel, which I don't believe many or any of the gassers did. The seat, yes, it's brown cloth. If you look here on the hood, there's some uh, evidence of this having an aftermarket cab on it. Um, when they got that cab, they got this seat. That's about all I can say. But anyhow, uh, this is one of the Synchro range, gas 4030s. Um, it does have triple hydraulics on it, but it was, uh, it was added later. This tractor left the factory as a dual and I can confirm that because if this left the factory with three hydraulics this would be a lot smoother and this would not have been cut off with a grinder. Um, I don't even know that the triple hydraulic tractors had a cylinder carrier at all but uh, I know the doubles did and it had two hooks on it but to put the third valve on it you had to notch out the had to notch out the uh, this panel here and uh, cut that off and that's that's how this one was done uh, then the last tractor that we took is still over there sitting on the trailer then this one here is the last one that we took the classic green reunion 2021 um, not really much to look at until you get to looking at it. This is a 3020 utility LP. Now, depending on the source you look at, um, and we've got Mr. Thinker's Almanacs. One of them says 17, one of them says 23. We've done a little bit more research and 17 seems to be the more likely number. And that was all years of the utility that was produced. This one is a 1966 by the serial number, putting it as one of three built that year. Again, it's not much to look at, but honestly, right now it looks a little better than it did when it made it up here last Tuesday or last Monday night, Tuesday night, Monday night, from Moulton, Alabama, where it was purchased. It had some god awful battery boxes screwed to the side of it. It had a god awful pipe bumper on it that's all now gone. We put a set of starters and weights on it or set of starter weights and one pad, I mean, meant to say. The uh, grill screens and the rear side panels, we put those on. And uh, this tractor never got unloaded from the trailer. It, uh, it came home here, stayed on the trailer, went to Columbus. It's back home now. And here in a little bit after shutting the video off, it's probably going, its tires are going to sit on Meigs County soil for the first time. And speaking of soil, um, we brought a little bit of Alabama back with us, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is, I mean, 
we've kind of ended up getting some rare and uncommon tractors over the years and this is uh this is probably by far going to be the rarest one it's going to get the most complete most correct restoration that we can possibly give it uh, because honestly it deserves it and you'll be seeing this tractor in video and a lot more videos as time goes on and uh, also it came home with two others and i'll be doing a video on those here at some point pretty soon so anyhow that's uh that one and uh these five over here were the ones that we took to columbus and uh classic yep classic green reunion 2021 in columbus ohio the next one in 2023 is going to be in lebanon tennessee um hope to make that one as well but the next show that we go to it, or big show i guess you could say is going to be the uh the, the Ohio Two Cylinder Expo in Worcester in uh, 2022. And you'll probably get to see some of these there as well. So, anyhow, folks, uh, thanks for sticking with me. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.